Hey guys, it's Chris of Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you'll find this video to be useful and maybe by the end, I'll have earned your subscription. What I'm gonna be talking about today is I'm gonna be trying to answer a simple question that a viewer recently uh, posed on one of my YouTube videos. And what that viewer wanted to know is what are the numbers that I shoot for when I make my guitar pickups, when I wind them with my winder? Now, this is a question that's actually come up a few times recently. Uh, ever since I uh, came up with my CNC pickup winder, uh, I've gotten a lot of questions from folks who want to know more about making pickups. And they specifically want to know what numbers I shoot for in order to achieve a specific tone. And I try to keep things as simple as possible. Even though a guitar pickup is an incredibly simple component, it's basically just one or two coils of wire with a magnet. And I try to keep that, I try to remain in that world of simplicity. However, when you start to really research how pickups work, it's easy to find yourself going down that rabbit hole of electrical engineering and science, and it can get really complicated. In fact, as I was preparing this video, I wanted to find a simple explanation for the differences between inductance, impedance, uh, resonant peak, um, you know, DC resistance, all those different factors. But unfortunately, there is no simple answer and it can get extremely complicated. But when I make a pickup, I'm trying to keep it simple. And part of the reason for that is because it doesn't need to be complicated. The pickup obviously is required for an electric guitar to work. It's really kind of the basis of where the tone and the sound is going to come from. Without the pickups, you've got no sound. It, it will, the guitar will sound like a really, really bad acoustic. Um, but with the, the pickup uh, introduced into the guitar, that's where you get your signal, which can then be manipulated and amplified before it hits the speaker. And since we have that ability to manipulate the signal before we, our ears hear it coming out of the speaker, I don't feel it's necessary to dive too deep into the nuances of pickup science and all the um, theory and, and uh, technology and such that goes into how pickups work. So the three numbers that I shoot for when I make a pickup is turn count, um, the uh, gauss of the magnet, and the final uh, inductance measurement when the pickup is finished. Those are the numbers that I can manipulate and that's going to affect the tone. Of course, there are other numbers that you'll hear people talk about or measurements like Q factor and resonant peak and, and all that. And, and you know, you can use those certainly, there's no rule against it. But I'm trying to keep it really simple as I make a pickup. And I know that by determining the number of turns of wire that I put on a coil is going to affect the strength of the signal. Uh, the more turns, the more powerful the signal, the faster it's going to drive an amp into distortion. And the number of turns can also be dictated by the gauge of the wire. Obviously, the thicker the wire, the fewer number of turns and the weaker the signal, but the weaker the signal, the more balanced the tone is across the treble, mid-range, and bass frequencies. So you have to take all those into consideration when deciding the number of turns that you're going to put on a coil. And then once I've wound the coil and assembled the pickup, I have to install a magnet. And the magnet, its composition as well as its gauss level, which is the strength of the magnet, is also going to determine what the pickup is going to sound like. And we have a wide variety of different types of magnets that we can use in pickups. And by swapping these out, you can get different um, 
uh, performance effects. Most of the magnets that we use are probably going to be of the Alnico variety. And there's a lot of different kinds of Alnico magnets. Uh, you see them as uh, advertised as Alnico 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to, I think, 9. And I typically will use Alnico 2s, uh, Alnico 5s, and then sometimes Alnico 8s. And these magnets have different levels of gauss or different uh, field strengths. So by selecting the magnet with the right magnetic strength, I can fine tune the tone of the pickup. But the nice thing about Alnico is you can raise or lower the gauss uh, by yourself or by simply exposing the magnet to a stronger magnet, like a neodymium magnet. You can actually decrease or increase the level of Gauss in the magnet. So you can fine tune the Gauss in order to achieve the tone that you want. Another uh, important consideration with magnets has to do with the composition of the magnets. And that plays directly into that third measurement that I mentioned, which is the inductance of the pickup. Once the pickup has been completely assembled, I can measure the inductance level using an LCR meter. And the inductance is measured in Henry's. And I know from experience that the higher the inductance level, the darker the pickup will sound. The lower the number, the brighter it will sound. So I can measure that and I can tell right away what the level of inductance is gonna be and how that's gonna affect the tone. I can control that by changing the magnet or some of the components in the pickup. For example, with a humbucker pickup, you have pole pieces, and these are generally just made out of um, different compositions of steel. And based on their iron content, you can manipulate that level of inductance. So you can raise and lower it depending on how much iron is present in those components. And the magnet, even though we're using Alnico magnets, which is a blend of aluminum, nickel, and cobalt, they also contain a significant amount of iron. And that iron and the level of iron in that particular Alnico magnet can affect the level of inductance. So you can raise or lower the inductance based on the type of magnet you use. And of course, the type of magnet you use, they have different magnetic field strengths, which can affect the way it, the guitar will play. So you kind of have to play around. And that's one of the reasons why I like to make pickups. People have asked me, why do you go to the trouble of making a pickup when you can just, you know, order a Seymour Duncan or a DiMarzio or, you know, whatever? Well, it's because I like to make them. I like to play around with these different factors and to see how they're going to sound when the guitar is finished. So if you're new to making pickups, I would highly recommend that you pick up a multimeter just to test to make sure that the coils work, an LCR meter that can measure the inductance, and then you're, you're uh, pretty well on the way to being able to make your own pickups and to dial in the uh, design and, and selection of the components in the pickup to create the tone that you want. Now, I wouldn't worry about getting too deep into it, because remember, that signal's gonna leave your guitar, it may go through a pedal board, uh, you know, preamps and all kinds of stuff before it ever even hits your speakers. So you can manipulate the tone to a greater degree with those components than you really can with the pickups. So just think of the pickups as sort of the basis where it all gets started and then worry about manipulation elsewhere. So I hope you found this video to be useful. It's, it's a difficult subject to talk about because there are so many factors in the design of a pickup. It, it is basic electrical engineering and electrical science, and it can get extremely complicated. And I think that that can lead to a lot of frustration and the reason why folks will just say, hey, you know what, I'm not gonna do this. I'll just buy off the shelf pickups. But you know, if you're going to the trouble to make a guitar from scratch, shouldn't you make the pickups as well? 
That way you have total control over the tone that comes out of this instrument. It's all yours. So uh, until the next episode, as always, um, be sure to hit the thumbs up button down if you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. And um, if you want to show some support to the channel, head over to my eGuitar Plans website or to my YouTube merch uh, store that's uh, displayed down below the description. Uh, I've got plans and t-shirts and all kinds of stuff that you can take a look at. And any purchase you make will help to support the channel. So until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back.